this is Dr. Bertha Ayi presenting Word of Inspiration. Today my message is entitled Part 4 of the Stone and the subtitle for today's message is Take Away the Stone. My text is taken from John 11 chapter John chapter 11 verse 39 to 41 and I read Jesus said take ye away the stone Martha the sister of him that was dead said unto him Lord by this time he stinketh, for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if you will believe, thou should see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Today my hope is that by the end of this series and message, you will choose to believe the impossible in your life so that you will see the glory of God. This is the last of the series I've been teaching on stone, on the stone, and today I focus on the stone that Jesus asked or gave commandment that it be taken away. He said this to a family that was in pain, they were in despair and doubting because their brother Lazarus was dead, and despite many calls for Jesus to come when he was sick, he took his good old time to get there, and by the time he arrived, Lazarus, their brother, was dead. He was wrapped up, put in a tomb, and covered with a stone. Verse 35 of John 11 records the shortest verse in the Bible. It says, Jesus wept. And Jesus posed a, rhetor a rhetorical question to Martha, which I pose to you today. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Today, would you believe? Would you believe for God to raise up something in your life that is dead to the point where the situation stinks? It smells bad. Or as the King James Bible posted, it stinketh. Let us read the account together. John chapter 11 verse 1. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Verse 2, it was that Martha, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but that the glory of God, but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days in still in the same place where he was. Verse 14. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you ask of God, God will give it to you. And Jesus said unto her, your brother would rise again. Verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came unto her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? Then they said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Verse 39. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time... He stinketh, for he's been dead four days. And Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto you that if you would believe, you should see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto him, unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. I want us to take a, few, a note of a few things about this passage. First, verse 1 and 5 tell us, Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. So based on this love, when Lazarus was sick, they sent him a message with a clause. 
just in case you forgot Jesus Lord behold the disciple whom you love is sick not just any other person the one that you love then he ignored the message and stayed for two days isn't it odd what kind of love is this when he had heard therefore that he was sick he abode two days in the same place where he was verse 6 you love me I'm sick and you wait two days pause and think for a moment what do you think Mary and Martha would feel about this silence from Jesus they will ask, I thought he loved us. Maybe he doesn't love us. What's he up to? What's going on? Have you ever been in a situation where something that means a lot to you is slowly dying or going off track right before your eyes and you called on the Lord several times, reminded him that he loved you and he just seemed to be quiet and ignored you? I have many times. You may be even in a situation like that when you ask, did I not pray to God? I thought he loved me. Yes, friend, he still loves you. Even when he's quiet, I have come to that conclusion because I've noticed he always has a dramatic plan to glorify God at the right time, just as he did for Lazarus. He said in verse four, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. That's what he told his disciples. In verse 14, he said, Lazarus is dead. But here is where you come in. Even though Jesus told his disciples that this sickness is not unto death, but that the Son of God may be glorified, he went and asked Martha, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? In other words, whatever you're dealing with, for you to see the glory of God, God wants you to believe. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? He knew Lazarus was dead. In the same way, God knows the situation in your life that you've been calling him about, but seemingly appears dead right now. Jesus knows when it died. In fact, he knew when it was deteriorating and he knew when it died. How do I know this? Notice how Mary and Martha sent messengers to Jesus when Lazarus was sick and he chose to stay two days. During this time, he was still carrying on dialogue with his, with his disciples. In fact, when he was ready to go, they tried to tell him, if you go back there, it looks like they're trying to stone you. Why do you want to go back to the same place verse 8 he said master the Jews of late sought to stone you do you want to go there again back to Judea and then he kept on dialoguing with them until he finally told them Lazarus is dead it means at the moment Lazarus died Jesus knew it what is dead in your life right now your education your business your career your marriage like a woman I recently spoke to, she'd had this difficult son and she'd been praying for him and praying for him. And finally, she got a verdict. He's been sentenced to life imprisonment. In other words, stop praying. Your Lazarus is dead. She felt hopeless. Like Martha, you may start accusing Jesus as she did in verse 21. If you had been here, my situation would not have died. You could have saved my job, my business, my marriage. Now look. But today I want to bring you words of hope, just like Jesus gave to Martha. Verse 23, he said, your brother will rise again. Your situation will live again. Believe it. Jesus, amidst tears and groaning in his spirit, got to the grave and said, take ye away the stone. Martha started to argue, to question him. Lord, my brother has been dead four days. He smells bad. The place is going to stink. And in verse 40, Jesus told her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Finally, Martha gave in and obeyed the instruction. Jesus asked Lazarus to come forth. Arise from the dead. And Jesus said, lose him and let him go. Today, if there's any situation in your life that appears dead, 
maybe God has given you an instruction. I don't know what you're dealing with. And I don't even know the stone that is covering that situation that stinks. I just know that God has been speaking to you. Something that doesn't make sense. It doesn't appear. It defies logic. He's telling you to take away the stone from something that stinks. But go ahead and do it. Because as you do it, it's only after you've taken away the stone that Jesus can shout and say, Lazarus, arise. Take away the stone. And after the stone was removed, he gave instruction, Lazarus, arise. And the Bible says, and Lazarus came forth, bound with his feet and hands and everything. And Jesus said, lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. What instruction have you been receiving in your spirit? Is it a phone call you need to make again? Do you need to reapply to that job? Do you need to go back to that school? You would have your own take away your stone instruction. Today, Jesus is challenging your logic just as he did to Martha. And he will let that situation be loosed and let go. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Let us pray. Father, we thank you that situations that you sometimes you allow situations in our lives to get to a point of desperation. And then they die right before our eyes, even though you love us, just so we can see your glory. But to see your glory, we need to believe. Teach our hearts to believe. Teach our hearts to believe. Today, I declare over every death situation in your life that needs to rise up and be let loose, that it will rise up and let loose. The Bible says, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on this earth is loose in heaven. Today, we let some situations lose. And we declare to those things, those dead things to come up and be loose in the name of Jesus. And we say this because you are a father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today the Lord bless you and keep you and i want you to enjoy the song by tamil man that says step aside and let god do what he needs to do in your life and growing up i remember i lived near an apostolic church and one evening this large big church sang this song that sat in my spirit and has never left me it goes like this i tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of god you will experience the power of God you will see the glory of God I tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God enjoy the song by Tamil Man didn't catch God by surprise because he knew it.